Do you ever wonder if the narcissist actually thinks about you? If so, this video is for you because that is exactly what we're talking about today at queenbeing.com. Does the narcissist ever think about you? And what do they think? So let's get started. Closed captioning provided by Athena Moberg and cptsdfoundation.org. My name is Angie Atkinson and on this channel I offer free daily video coaching to help you discover, understand, and overcome narcissistic abuse in toxic relationships. I like to call it toxic relationship rehab. So if that sounds good to you, hit that subscribe button and let's get going. If you've ever been in a relationship with a narcissist and you've dealt with the ongoing confusion and brainwashing and mind control, then you probably wonder when you finally end that relationship or maybe even while you're still in that relationship, does the narcissist really ever think about me? Let's talk about that. Short answer, yes, but not for the reasons we would hope. Let me explain. For the average toxic narcissist, the discard leads to the out of sight, out of mind phenomenon. That is, they don't see you as a whole person, but as an extension of themselves. Their perception of relationships isn't the same as yours or mine. They see relationships sort of like smartphones. Sure, when they first got them, they were new and shiny and fast and they had new features, but eventually they slowed down and a newer, faster, better model came out. They quickly upgraded. Maybe they miss a feature or two from the old phone, but in general, they don't dwell on the old phone. Narcissists are infamous for going to revisit old flames for sure, but you've got to know that it's not about the actual person. Instead, it's what they can can get from that person in the form of narcissistic supply. Now don't confuse this with the idea that they miss you or that they feel something real. Think of it like this. Let's say you're craving ice cream and you hear the ice cream truck coming down the street. What luck you think? I was just craving ice cream. So you go outside and you stand there with your money and as the ice cream truck approaches you won't turn away and go back inside if it isn't the truck that you expected to see or if it isn't your usual ice cream truck. You're not thinking about the ice cream truck at all. You're only thinking of the delicious ice cream you're about to indulge in. So it's what it can provide, not the truck itself. You can and would get your ice cream fix from any ice cream truck, right? Does this make sense to you? Well, let's dig in and relate this back to narcissists and their psychology. By nature, narcissists are extreme in their affections. They're as shallow as they are unstable. During the love bombing phase, narcissists will find you to be highly desirable. Since they're in acquisition mode during the beginning of a relationship, they're always on their best behavior. They're trying to get you hooked. They're trying to win you. And this means that they don't bother looking for anything wrong. They put you up on a pedestal and they fool both you and themselves. The truth is that part of the reason we don't notice the red flags during that time is because narcissists actually believe what they're saying in that moment. They really think, at least temporarily, that they've found Mr. or Ms. perfect. You have to remember too that narcissists lack object constancy and that means that they can only see you as either perfect or totally and completely worthless. There is no in between. Of course, right about the time they get you fully attached, they start to notice little flaws about you. Nothing big, just enough to help them recognize that you are in fact human. But now that they've got you in their clutches, they see you as sort of an object, a trophy if you will. While the initial days of this phase will feel all too good to be true, you will soon notice that it actually is too good to be true. The idealization or love bombing phase ends abruptly and painfully as you head into the discard phase. This is around the time that they get bored. The narcissist's feelings seem to go from fire to ice. They will suddenly become the most critical person you've ever met. Sure, it'll be subtle at first, maybe a veiled insult here and there. And before you know it, you're the primary target of quietly horrific psychological abuse. Most narcissists can't have decent relationships. Once a narcissist knows that they have you, they almost feel like they don't want you anymore. Of course, if they lose you, they go right into the hoovering mode, meaning they'll need to suck you back in. This means they'll suddenly need to be with you again and nothing will stand in their way. The chase resumes and they'll pursue you like no other, at least until they have you back, in which case they'll go right back into the devalue and discard phases. This can feel almost as good as love bombing to an unsuspecting codependent. But as always, the other shoe drops and despite how sincerely they recently professed their love, no matter how many exciting and detailed plans they future faked you into believing? As soon as their interest wanes, they suddenly develop a very convenient case of amnesia and they start backing toward the proverbial exit door and right out of the relationship. This is, as you already know, a vicious cycle that can continue for months, years, or even decades. So where does all of this leave you? Devastated would be an understatement. You won't understand how someone who was just so passionate and hot for you has suddenly decided to freeze you out. But why can they be so cold? What's that all about? 
Well, here's the awful but simple truth. In this moment, the narcissist doesn't care about you. Sure, they might try to suck you back in at some point, and yeah, this cycle will repeat. But the truth is, it's not you they're coming for. It's the narcissistic supply you offer them. It's not who you are, it's what you can do for them. So in the example of the ice cream truck, this means you're the truck and the ice cream is the supply. Does that make sense? So is all of this your fault or what? Did you do something wrong? No. The fact is that you couldn't have done anything to change this situation. The narcissist repeats this cycle in every one of their relationships. No matter who you are, and you could be the most amazing person on the planet, it doesn't matter. The narcissist does not succeed in relationships, at least not long-term healthy ones. Now, don't get me wrong, in many cases, they'll sit around and they'll suck up your narcissistic supply for years if you let them. They are not capable of keeping up a healthy facade for long, and this will lead healthier targets, or people who haven't had their self-esteem destroyed by their parents or another toxic relationship, to walk away from the narcissist. This, of course, will often lead the narcissist back to a more reliable source of narcissistic supply, and that might be you. Bottom line, narcissists seem to stop thinking about you when they no longer want you, but most narcissists repeat this cycle over and over again with you and everyone they get involved with in various capacities. The solution involves self-bolstering. You've got to figure out how to trust yourself and see your own self-worth, your self-value. I'm going to put a link to a video right here so that you can check Check out how to unapologetically love yourself and unconditionally accept yourself. It's so important for us as survivors, so make sure you take a look at that. All right, now this brings me to the question of the day. And the question of the day is, have you found yourself wondering if the narcissist ever thinks about you? And how do you handle it? Share your thoughts, share your ideas, share your experiences in the comment section below, and let's talk about it. I just want to say a quick thank you to everyone who subscribes to my channel, watches my videos, likes my videos, comments on my videos, shares my videos. By doing that, you help me spread my message just a little bit further, and you help me help other survivors to discover, understand, and overcome narcissistic abuse and toxic relationships. That is my mission in life, and it means the world to me, so thank you. Now, while I'm here, I want to take a quick moment to say thank you to all of my channel members, those people who support me through the YouTube channel membership program. Their contribution contributions help me to help you even more effectively through free resources from queenbeing.com, all of my free videos, and everything else that I'm able to do to connect with you. So to each and every one of my Inner Circle members, thank you sincerely for all of your help. My Inner Circle includes Jessica, Lori, Jonathan, Abraham, Shannon, Kristen, Jill, OG Marv, Beautiful Purpose, Dawn Elizabeth, Roseanne, Shauna, Michael John, Julie, Mental Hilarity, Lou, Missy, Deborah, Denise, Stephanie, Tiffany, Nessa, Marsha, Stacy, Boku, Trisha, Kimberly, Thoy, Victoria, Patty, Carrie Ann, Ashley, Chantel, La Precious, Steph, Dana, Mo Cowboy, Shay, Christina, Ray Ray, Christy, Alda, Smith & Wesson, Ms. Lisa, Martha, Freedom Lee, Mindy, Lynn, Linnell, Phoenix, Cherie, Alice, Carrie, Angel, Bible News Radio, Linda, Charlie, Laura, Pierre Lala, Janet, Paul, Sarah Lee, Marlene, James, Life's Revival, Lorenzo, Deborah, Roxanne, and my very first supporter, Angela Falsetta. Again, I just want to say to my inner circle, thank you so much for hitting that join button. It really does mean a lot to me to know that you're supporting me. Thanks again from the bottom of my heart. As always, thank you so much for being a part of my day and a part of my life, and hey, thanks for letting me be a part of yours. It really does mean a lot to me. All right, now that's all I've got for you. But before I go, take a look at the videos I'm leaving for you right there and right there. And while you're here, hit that subscribe button so we can stay connected and continue on this healing journey together. I'll see you soon.